Hello, my name is Jackie Fowler. I'm the Assistant Superintendent of Exceptional Education and a member of the redistricting committee for the school district. We will be taking you through a presentation of the summary and the findings of our work as a committee. We will also include how and why the committee came to be and some feedback that we received from our family and our staff. We'll start with the membership and representation of our committee. It included members of all bargaining units, which include CSEA, WISTA and WISA, Board of Education members, administrators, family and community members, and parents. We were all volunteers and we spent over 17 hours reviewing data and sharing of ideas, brainstorming, and generating of various ways that we could review data and look at how our students attend school. All were volunteers. We received feedback from various stakeholder groups through focus groups and surveys that were completed in November and December of 2022. The original timeline included a decision and recommendations to the Board of Education for February of 2023. As a committee, we determined we needed more time in order to investigate and use data to inform our decision-making process. I will start with our purpose. Our purpose was to balance student enrollment aligned with available phys physical space. Our similar class size range within each school. Equitable educational programs. Reasonable proximity to school and proportionate spaces for learning and playing was our purpose. We also had committee considerations. Our committee considerations included socioeconomic diversity, ethnic and racial diversity, Title I status and other historically underserved students, transportation costs, and future development. Our committee task was to gather and analyze multiple sources of data, collect and review the opinions of family members and staff through survey and focus groups, identify inequities and design potential solutions, and create recommendations. That brings us to our tenets for decision making, which was rooted in the collection of survey and focus data. And after analysis of that data, these were our tenets for all of our decision making. The first tenet, based on family feedback, was students assigned to a school closest to their home. Additionally, children in the same neighborhood would attend the same school in their neighborhood. Also, dedicated classroom space for special area teachers, for music and for art. And additionally, students to remain on either the east side or the west side of the district when transitioning from elementary and beyond. These were important elements based on our family feedback survey. Staff feedback survey results included a dedicated workspace, including office or classroom, for staff. Additionally, class size would be similar in each school. It was not as important for students to remain on either the east side or the west side as long as students' needs were met based on the staff feedback. These were used as we went through our data and worked through the process as a committee. I will now turn it over to Will Thiel, our business official, who is also a member of the redistricting committee. Thank you, Jackie. When we began to look at the redistricting for elementaries with the focus points that Mrs. Fowler had in mind, the committee constructed and reviewed multiple maps. Um, think of 20 adults in a room with the district literally cut up into little chunks, moving them around, trying to accomplish the goals that the community and the staff had put forth for us. We had several concerns as we approached this. One was the enrollment shifts into Title I buildings, Winchester Potter and Northwood. Two was our increased staff. Since 2019, the district has increased staff to meet social, emotional, and special ed needs of our students. And the question arose, do these proposed enrollment shifts create actual classroom space or are we just impacting class size? So we began with this map 
This is the current elementary boundaries, and I just want to point out for everybody that Allendale is this purplish color, and you can see that it's in two segments, one of which actually houses the Winchester Potter building. So no students that attend Winchester Potter actually live in the neighborhood surrounding Winchester Potter. That was part of Tenant 1, bringing kids to their home school that we sought to address right away. These are a series of maps constructed by the committee members that moved their boundaries around the district trying to achieve these goals. As you can see, the Winchester Potter population is re-established around its school in each map. Quinton is slightly smaller because it's an area of overcrowding. Allendale loses the Winchester population and therefore becomes a smaller building, which also fits with the number of classrooms and the overcrowding it currently experiences. This graph summarizes the enrollment changes by each map with the blue columns indicating where we started. Map C1, or the one the committee settled on, is in the red and white columns. So you can see that in Allendale, Quinton, and West Elementary, the population decreases. And in Winchester Potter and Northwood, the population increases. We wanted to be careful while doing this, however, that we didn't restrict classroom space in our Title I buildings and create the same overcrowding we currently experience in Clinton and Ellendale. For example purposes, this is classroom use at elementary, assuming that every class could be structured with 20 students. If you look at the top section of the chart, the first column with totals in it indicates at 20 students per classroom, we would be running 132 and a half classrooms. We're actually, at this point in time, running 131 classrooms. So I would say that's pretty accurate and right on the money. Map C, which was a committee construction, is the bottom of the chart. It also prescribes 131.5 classrooms, a change of half a classroom from above. So we haven't, we've moved students around the district, but we have not created class, uh, classrooms availability for teachers who currently teach outside their classroom spaces to move into. Map C1 is where we ended up, which is only a, a change of 0.3 of a classroom. So again, we are unable to, just by moving students around the district, create space for the special area teachers uh, speech, OT, PT, uh, mathematics, AIS, ELA, AIS, reading, and all the other special areas that have built up since the pandemic to uh, try to meet our students' needs. We just have not been successful in achieving that. So to summarize, moving students impacts class size more than creating classroom availability. We could increase class size to create classroom availability, but not to the extent to absorb the amount of staff that we've brought in to assist student needs. We have special education needs continuing to expand, and to accommodate some of these special ed classrooms, the district office actually physically moved from West Elementary to Ebenezer. That space has now been fully absorbed and it's not available for other classroom use. So the one positive we can take from this is we were able to achieve a more neighborhood-friendly homeschool model and repopulate Winchester Potter with students from the surrounding neighborhoods. We also began to look at our middle schools. West Middle School has a current enrollment around 767 students, East 593 students. The committee looked at moving students from West Middle to East Middle to solve overcrowding predominantly in grade six. The problem is that West Middle physically has the higher student count and a lower student classroom capability, while East Middle has the lower student count and a higher number of classrooms. 
This results primarily from the closing of East Elementary, which is part of the same building. There was actually discussion of changing the names of the school and making East-West and West-East because that would match the current student needs and classroom space availability. The second suggestion was to try to shift students from West to East and that we, the committee looked at two options for that which I'll show on the map in a moment. And the same concerns arose. Um, does the proposed enrollment shift create actual classroom space availability or are we just massaging class size? And what are the other factors that impact classroom usage in our buildings? There was also a concern of students move from west to east without any further restructuring. Would they return to west for high school? So we identified two areas that could possibly move from west to east at middle school. One is a piece of the Winchester Potter neighborhood, which is approximately 90 students, about 30 at each grade level. A second option was the neighborhoods currently east of Union Road, but attending west middle. That's a, an option that would move 131 students, again, fairly equally distributed amongst the three grade levels. Class sizes at both buildings um, have concerns at the sixth grade area. As you can see, class sizes at east approaching 23 and at west at 24. Grade 7 and grade 8 are taught on a different model, a teaming model, and their class sizes are lower. So to summarize the middle school issues, we can slightly impact grade 6 class sizes by moving students from west to east, but it does not create classroom capacity for the other services that need to be housed. We propose two areas for student shifts. That's a decision to, that you will opine on and the district will reflect on. And we need to look at how we do our middle schools, how we instruct, and look at our teaming structure and create some guidelines for our teaming structure that could generate some classroom space and equalize class sizes among all three grade levels. Some combination of student shifts and re-envisioning the teaming structure is probably the proper solution. We did look at other options. We looked at reopening of Winchester Academy, a building closed only two to three years ago with the population moved into the Winchester Potter building. Currently that building is leased to Erie One Boses to house special ed students and it generates revenue of approximately $660,000 for the district. Another option would be to look at East Elementary, closed approximately 10 years ago. Um, and in both cases, with Winchester being the outlier for the lease revenue, uh, the district would be required to increase staffing to house these students, primarily office staff, uh, administrative staff, principal staff, nursing staff, um, and some additions to the custodial and cleaning staff to make it so. So these two options are possible, but have significant cost impact with them should they be chosen. Winchester obviously being more expensive to do because of the uh, lease from BOCES. That would also displace a large number of special ed students, some of which are our students, and there is little to no capacity for that within our region at the present time. So we began to look at a possible realignment as a way to solve our situation. In June, we talked about reorienting the grades amongst four elementary schools at K to three, creating three lower middle schools at four to seven, one upper middle school at grade eight to grade nine, and a single senior high school at grade 10 through 12. Um, there were concerns voiced upon the committee, mostly at the a uh, lower middle level where grades four and grade seven would be housed together and a question of maturity and appropriateness was raised. 
We also noted that currently West Elementary is a hub for special education activity in the district and that we would have to, because of the grade level shifts, move these students around uh, and that would probably eat into our classroom capacity created by any such of a realignment. In September, we presented to the committee a slightly altered version of that plan. We would create elementary capacity by removing grade five. So our five elementary buildings would become grades K through four and would free up up to 22 classrooms at the elementary level. All elementary buildings would remain elementary and we would shift students according to map C1 to create the home school relationship. We would realign the middle schools into grades five through seven, address the enrollment shifts as proposed uh, in our middle school presentation, and look at re-envisioning our team concepts to assure equity cl in class size. We would create the upper middle school grade eight through nine on high school concepts it would unite athletics, music, and curricular offerings across the district. We would create a single high school, grades 10 through 12, again uniting athletics, music, and curricular offerings, such as APs, our academies, which are strung out between the two buildings currently, CTE students, those are students who spend a half day at BOCES, AM, or PM, and that totals approximately 200 students currently attending BOCES from two separate buildings. Concerns raised were space at the higher grade levels and what would be the implementation timeline. This slide shows a progression of options and the tenants for decision making as discussed in the previous slides. Starting with shifting of attendance zones only, it meets our tenants based on closest to home, students attending school in the same neighborhood, it remains the east side and the west side continuum. It does not allow for dedicated special area classrooms, does not allow for dedicated workspaces, and does not allow for class size similarity. The second box indicates shifting of attendance zones and a middle school switch where west middle and east middle would, would switch. Meets the tenets of closest to home Students attending school in the same neighborhood. The east side, west side becomes neutral. It does not meet the tenets of dedicated special area classrooms, dedicated workspaces, and class size similarity. The next item in the chart is the June option and includes a realignment. The realignment grade bands are K3, 4, 7, 8, 9, and 10, 12. This meets the tenant of closest to home same neighborhood, dedicated special area classrooms, dedicated workspaces, class size, similarity, and east side, west side is neutral. The last option on this chart includes attendance zone shifts, for example, map C1, and reconfiguration grade bands of K4, 5, 7, 8, 9, and 10 through 12. These meet the tenants of closest to home, students from the same neighborhood attending the same schools, dedicated workspaces, dedicated special area classrooms, class size similarity. It also remains neutral the east side and the west side. Any or all of these options can be considered. After reviewing this video, we encourage you to now participate in the community-wide survey through Thought Exchange. Thank you.